try and solve for all the solutions of this complex equation. There are going to be five solutions. And once you've done that, I'll go through the solution. So this was my method. Okay. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put both sides of this equation into exponential form. So for the left-hand side, we have this complex number Z. And the complex number Z can be written as the modulus times by E to the power of the argument theta times by I. Okay, but that was raised to the fifth power. So this here is now raised to the fifth power. So I can distribute that five in. All right, so distributing the five, we get R to the power of five times by E to the power of five theta I. Okay, now for the right-hand side, we have to express this in exponential form, exponential modulus argument form. So let's draw our complex plane with our real numbers on this axis and our imaginary numbers on this axis. And now negative one will put us somewhere here on this line. And then plus i will put us on this line. So that's where our complex number sits. And you'll notice that it sits three quarters of the way to the negative real axis, which means, and if this angle is pi, then it sits, which is 180 degrees, then it sits three quarters pi. So in other words, our argument now, let's we move this over here, our argument is going to be three quarters pi plus 2 pi k i. And I said plus 2 pi k i because if we add 2 pi, we're adding 360 degrees, we're adding a full revolution. So if I add a full revolution to this point, we come back to the same point. Okay. Now, for the, arg for the modulus, which is the distance that our complex number sits from the origin, we have to calculate the length of that line. The length of that line can be done with Pythagoras. We know that length is 1 and that length is 1. So we have 1 squared plus 1 squared square rooted, which is the square root of 2. Okay, so now we've written both sides in, comp in, in uh, exponential form. The modulus argument exponential form. Okay, now we can equate the parts of these. We can equate the moduli and then we can equate the arguments. Okay. So now we have to have that r to the power of 5 is equal to the root of 2. Because this complex number must equal to this complex number, which is what the question is essentially saying. So now the argument of this must also equal to the argument of this. So therefore r to the power of 5 must equal to the square root of 2. So solving that, we get r to the power of 5 equal to 2 to the power of 1 over 2. And r is equal to 2 to the power of 1 over 2 times by 1 over 5, which is just 2 to the power of 1 over 10. Okay, now we must equate the arguments. We have 5 theta equal to 3 quarters pi, 3 quarters pi plus 2 pi k. So we have 5 theta is equal to 3 quarters pi plus 2 pi k. And uh, this k here is an element of integers, which means we can substitute in any integer for k. Okay, so let's continue to solve for theta. Theta is now equal to 3 pi by 20, because I divided this by 5, plus 2 pi k by 5, because I divided this by 5 as well. So I've divided every term by 5, and I'll solve for theta as well. All right, now all that's left to do is to rewrite this complex number z. So we have z is equal to 2 to the power of 1 over 10 times by e to the power of 3 pi to the power of 20 plus 2 pi k over 5 i. Okay, now we could leave it at that, but if we were asked to put this into polar form, what we would first need to do is put it into a trigonometric form to solve that. So I'll go and do that for you now, which is another modulus argument form. So we have z is equal to 
2 to the power of 1 over 10 into cosine of the argument, which is 3 pi by 20 plus 2 pi k by 5 plus i sine of the same argument. So that's 3 pi by 20 plus 2 pi k by 5. Okay, so this is it solved in the trigonometric form for the modulus argument form, and this is it in the exponential form. And if we were asked in polar form, then we could simply substitute in values for k being 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which then would give us these specific arguments, which would then give us all of our specific solutions. And the reason why I said 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 was because this was initially uh, to the power of 5. So we have 5 solutions. And obviously the first solution is, is with k being 0. Because if k was 0, that term falls away. And then we do every term going up to the fourth term. And that's 5 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are 5 different numbers. Now, the reason why we don't carry on is because if you substitute in k being 5 over here, then you'll notice that the 5 and the k will cancel and we'll be adding 2 pi, which, is, which means we'll be adding a revolution. So we'll, coming, so we'll be coming back to our original value or our original solution where k was 0. So that is the, the reason why we only need to substitute in values for k from 0 to 4, the integer values from 0 to 4. And you can also plot that on an argon diagram using the same logic. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions regarding the content of this video, please do leave a comment. And please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying the countdown series. Thank you.